decorative, a little less realistic per se, but if you can see um, all these planks are kind of like a very subtle wood-like graining. This is a little bit more, a little less lifelike and a little bit more fun. Uh, this year we saw a lot of, a lot of rough hewn and end grain effects that we can achieve now. Um, this one in particular on the bottom, I love sort of the look of some factory end grain flooring and now there's more and more manufacturers who are pursuing that. And these wood like, I like to harp on these because these are my favorite, sort of my favorite genre of the new tiles, but you can use them anywhere. You can use them outdoors in particular for like a decking application. They're very sturdy. Um, bathroom spaces, wet spaces where normally you would not want to use a wood floor or be verboten. You can have a, uh, a porcelain or ceramic faux wood and run it into the bedroom, creating continuity between the spaces. Um, this collection actually mixes up faux stone and faux wood, and they're the same thickness, so it allows you to, um, to do more. I mean, you can run wood and stone on the wall and kind of alternate or create these sort of patterned um, stone with kind of scores like a grid of wood running through them. That's another look I'm seeing more and more of. Bedrooms. Um, you know, it's a very hygienic choice, particularly for hotels, um, easy to clean, bed bug proof um, because you're able to, to clean uh, more rigorously. And I, personally, I like the look of, of tile in a bedroom. I know that's kind of a hard sell sometimes that people really gravitate to carpeted floors and, and real wood floors for connotations of warmth, but, um, but this is a great, a great application as well. Living areas. This installation I love because um, it kind of works us into the next trend, this sort of uh, herringbone installation. Pattern play is something I'm starting to see a lot of, um, both in terms of wild optical effects, but also more subtle patterns that um, kind of help porcelain and ceramic achieve a more realistic look. It sort of distracts from their porcelain ceramicness. Um, with these kind of herringbone installations or mixing multiple sizes together. I think it just disguises the fact that this is uh, a ceramic and makes it look more stone-like when you're mixing up different formats. Um, and I'm seeing some really nice installations. This one's very subtle, but I think it's three different, three different sizes mixed up together in a very, fairly classic installation pattern, quite lovely. Um, faux carpets, something we're seeing a lot of in living spaces, um, in particular bathrooms and kitchens usually achieve with mosaic, but also um, larger format tiles I'll get to later. Um, as I was saying before, we see bold patterns kind of within the tile itself, uh, such as this collection, but we're also, and this one as well, this is kind of a, a, a lace, almost like a macrame look that was popular this year. A couple of manufacturers introduced collections that were inspired by textiles, but instead of being kind of straightforward weaves like we've seen before, we've seen a lot of like linen looks. Now we're starting to see lace and macrame um, effects, quite pretty. Um, so if you have a geometric within the tile body, you can create all these different patterns in the juxtaposition of the tiles. But also, um, here we have a, it's a polygonal, I'm sure there's like a, an actual trapezoidal maybe, polygonal um, shaped tile. And just depending upon how you install it, you can create different sort of optical effects underfoot. So this is, um, this is something that I'm finding very exciting and kind of interesting. This is uh, Etruria, a collection of hexagonal tiles, and you can install it in a pretty classic array, or you can, again, use them to create different sort of shapes, and this is kind of like a stopwatch look um, that I love. So the more shapes and sizes that you have at your disposal, the more you can kind of play with these bold patterns for you know, a wall or a floor. Fish scales, always popular. Um, I've seen them a lot in straightforward ceramics. This is a, a more stone-like look, quite lovely. Um, geometric patterns are also still being sort of paired with texture and dimensionality. So we're seeing a lot of tiles where sort of within the tile body, there's um, a sense of dimensionality or collections. This one, I believe, mixes up different thicknesses of tile um, to create sort of these modular walls where there is, I mean, obviously you can only do this on a wall and not a floor. Um, but sort of a play of dimension is quite nice. And, and that I'm mostly seeing them within uh, a monochromatic look as opposed to mixing up different colors, which can be a little wild and busy. This, I love this. This one really caught my eye. I think they had an ICFF last year, these pyramidal effects, just so nice to run your hand over. Um, really lovely and kind of like a, 
has a, a glaze to it, but it's still a little matte and burnished. It's really lovely. Um, we're also seeing, in terms of sort of patterns, um, more of the faux architectural moldings. This one's a little more exuberant than some of the ones you may see um, here in the AD, A and D building. We're able to um, achieve these very kind of wild effects of uh, sort of classical uh, wainscoting and detailing, but also um, there's a lot of collections that are sort of straightforward, um, sort of plank-like. They really imitate wood paneling, which is kind of nice and a lot more subtle than this, but this is quite impactful in a in a, you know, either in a lobby area or in, you know, smaller space where you want to kind of create a bold statement. Painterly effects I mentioned before. I'm not seeing a lot of these. These are kind of intriguing to me. Um, ceramics with glazes that really have kind of a, a washy effect to them. They're really lovely. Here are three collections that are pretty recent. Um, this is, you know, more of a striated look. Very lovely. And you're, we're seeing them in these um, kind of more of a pastel colorway. It's a Bardelli tile. It's actually a mural. I, I think these are these are hand painted. Um, they're really beautiful as, as an accent wall. I mean, obviously with a pattern like this, you need to run it over a fairly big swath of space. Um, you know, anchoring a bathtub or an accent wall somewhere. Tone on tone. Um, so the colorations are getting more and more subtle. Um, after a few years of really bold patternings. I think you know, the way trends happen is you know, manufacturers kind of show off what they can do and their capabilities and people get excited. Um, but in the end, it's kind of what's, what's specified is still, I think it tends to be quieter looks. So something like this is uh, sort of a happy medium between sort of a wild pattern but also a very uh, subtle textured effect. It, you know, it's sort of a cross between um, tile and textile, so it's really a beautiful um, you know, when you, when you see something that's so subtle, you almost want to see it in, installed in kind of a pretty large swath of space so you can really take advantage of these very uh, subtle changes in color and hue. I don't know that you can see this from where you're sitting, but this has, um, it's called Kilim and it has like almost a, a textile pattern sort of depressed into it. It's very kind of ghost-like and faded and really lovely. You almost can't tell when it's installed that there's a pattern on it. It's so subtle. But I'm starting to see more of these. It's almost like a, a ghostly trace of a pattern um, embedded into the tile. So again, like a tone on tone, it's not a wild coloration. We're seeing them a lot in sort of beiges and browns and grays. Um, this is a similar, a similar tile, a different manufacturer. But again, you can kind of see, you know, it's often installed like this where there's sort of a decor tile um, set within a field tile, but it's just a very subtle break from the pattern or a subtle break from, from a monochromatic feel with just a little bit of pattern, um, but not overdone. And really lovely in kind of a larger format tile. Um, it's sort of what you would do in a, as a, having a traditional inset into a swath of monochromatic feel tile, but it's kind of expanded. And I think it really expands the space more when you can do decors like this. Um, I think I saw a lot of two years ago, maybe not as much this year, was stone-like and wood-like field tiles is sort of a pattern overlaid on top of them. Um, so you can see the background has this kind of variegation of a natural stone and then you have um, a similarly colored pattern um, like in, embossed or glazed or embedded on top of it. It's sort of a nice, a nice look and mixes well with a stone uh, field tile. Um, again, often paired with textures. I think nowadays when I see kind of the wilder tiles installed um, in terms of texture, it usually is a monochromatic look like this, um, as opposed to so the raised or debossed texture being a different color. I think it's quite a nice effect. Um, so tone on tone, you know, I showed you mostly sort of geometrics and more decorative tiles, but it also um, is is used to create more stone-like looks as well. Um, you can just see the very subtle changes in color to create this quite natural look in porcelain stone. So spatial possibilities, kitchens and baths. Um, click you through a couple slides. Um, tile is really great when you have floating tubs. I don't know whether any of you have done um, interiors with sort of a floating tub in the middle of a space. I, I tend to see them more in bathrooms, but certainly probably more in hospitality applications. You'll see uh, a floating tub in sort of a um, a guest suite sort of next to the bed. And so it's nice to be able to run like a faux wood floor underneath 
sort of the bedroom area and the wet area um, just to create a lot of nice continuity. So I'm certainly seeing more standalone tubs. So within a, within a bathroom space, it's so nice because here sort of the zones, different spatial zones are created by different color tiles. So it's sort of a big open space, just a glass wall partitioning the shower from the bathing area. And the space is just demarcated by a change in color on the walls and floors. So I'm certainly seeing more of this. Um, this I quite like. It's very zen-like. It makes me want to kind of relax and take a, take a bath. Um, I don't see a lot of this unless it's in a hospitality application. I don't think that many uh, residences can, can have such a sort of a large open expanse of space and like a zen-like tub floating in the middle of it. But I love that, again, this whole room is kind of tiled and the, the inset around the, uh, the freestanding tub is the same tile but a different format, so a smaller that's probably like a four by four mosaic kind of inset around the tub and then these large format tiles surrounding it. Um, again, similar application. Just This is a nice kind of subtle wallpaper look in a bathroom, but again, you don't have to worry about moisture like you would with regular wallpaper. Um, certainly, uh, one thing that I didn't really point out earlier is um, that wallpaper patterns themselves are still quite big. Um, I'll get to that next. This is actually, I love this too. I think this is a, a computer rendering, but I love that you can just sort of have this wood bento box and you can have like a swath of a different tile sort of again demarcating the shower area from the rest of the space. It creates a very warm and lived in look. So wallpaper patterns, damasks, brocades, florals, um, still a big deal. We tend to see them executed more in mosaics than in these you know, larger format tiles, but they're quite lovely. And, the advantage of a large format over a mosaic is just fewer grout lines. So this is one area where it's nice to use a larger format tile, um, an accent wall behind a tub, even within a shower. Um, old florals, we're seeing more of these mosaics in, in uh, kind of quieter graphic effects. Floral, nature inspired, but um, fairly geometric. I also love this. Um, a couple of manufacturers have created these decor tiles that kind of float within a large format field tile. It's almost like a mural. It's really a really lovely look. Um, and this is a very subtle tone on tone floral pattern, a large format tile, and just has a very exquisite, um, almost boudoir effect to it. Um, I, I'm starting to see less traditional moldings and more installations that take advantage of collections that um, have a lot of different formats within a collection. So instead of a traditional chair rail, it's just kind of a matter of like tracing uh, a complementary tile and the sort of like datum line around uh, a bathroom. Also, I'm seeing more of this kind of wainscoting effect where the tiles just run halfway up the wall, kind of around the whole room and not just around the wet area. So by continuing it around the space, you're again kind of creating a more expansive feel in a small bathroom. It's quite nice. Um, again, this is another similar effect where there's sort of a datum line that continues around the bath, kind of pulls your eye out, makes the space seem bigger, um, and is, a, again, a nice alternative to sort of a traditional chair rail. Um, this is manufactured by FAF, and they also do this um, complementary series of accessories, such as shelves and toothbrush holders and soap dishes that can be embedded within the field tile. It's quite nice. So carpet pattern floors in both the kitchen and bathroom or something. I'm starting to see a little bit more of. I know this is still a little bit more of an out there look, but I, I, love, I love this kind of zebra-like effect underfoot. And um, it's, again, a good alternative to having fabrics in a wet space is to bring patterning in terms of a mosaic or a large format or a kind of geometric graphic tile like this. Wood in the bath, I mentioned earlier. It's just one of my favorite new looks. Uh, such a feeling of warmth compared to sort of a traditional stark white tile. Um, and this is sort of similar in a big, I think this space continues into the bedroom and we just have sort of wood carried under and kind of uniting the whole space. You can still have a a floating tub and a floating shower, and then there's continuity throughout the space. Um, this kitchen, it's hard to see this one, but as I was saying with these sort of wing scouting effects continuing, I'm seeing them a lot in kitchens, fewer overhead cabinets, or I'll often see open shelves 
kind of mounted on a, a, a wall of tile. Uh, 